Listen, you read the title, Josh, why are you not using Prisma anymore? It's a great database tool. And you know what? I'm not here to convince you otherwise. You're right, it is a great tool. For the past two months though, I haven't been using Prisma much at all. I've been using an alternative that tends to be faster, more performant. That's not the main reason I'm using it though, but for me, it's just more enjoyable to write. And all that actually works with an API that is super similar to Prisma. So you don't even have to write really different syntax, but you get all the profits on the other hand. So let's take a look at how that works. So when I got into Drizzle, this is how things worked. And even this was for me at least more fun than Prisma, but it's getting way better. Let me show you this. So at the start, let's define a very simple schema. And we don't do this in a Prisma specific syntax, but we do this in regular TypeScript. And let me zoom in so you can see this easier, where each user that we define up here has an ID property. And then also let's define some tweets. If we were building Twitter, for example, each tweet will have an ID, which is a integer that automatically increments a text of the content that is in the tweet and also a user ID. And this is the biggest problem when I first got into Drizzle. How do we know that this user ID is linked to the actual user? There is no reference right here. So what we could try to add is something like references and let's disable GitHub Copilot for this and then return the users.id. That is the Drizzle syntax of declaring references. But as you'll see, there's gonna be an error with this because if we try pushing this into our database by saying pnpm drizzle dash kit, push and then colon my SQL. That's just the same as Prisma DB push just with drizzle. If we hit enter here, you'll notice hmm, we get an error. Foreign key constraints are not allowed. And this is because I'm using planet scale under the hood, which I think many of you use too, because it is a really nice database provider, but they don't allow foreign key constraints. And this is a big problem. How can we easily query our data if we cannot do references? So currently take a look at this. We would have to fetch the user where the user ID equals or a certain user ID. In my case, that's just one. And then by a sub query or by a join, we would have to get all the tweets associated with that user. And honestly, this is not the most developer friendly way. So let me show you a really cool trick that fixes this. You'll be surprised as to how easy this actually is. Let's import relations from Drizzle or M. And what that allows us to do is create relations, at least some we can actually enforce and that allow us to easily fetch the data. First off, let's declare a user relation. So for the users table, we can destructure something called many and then say that one user should have many tweets. That makes sense, right? If you were on Twitter, you could write a thousand tweets if you wanted to. And then the other side of the relation. So the tweets relations now in comparison to the user relations, but now we're going to enforce a one relationship. So just like with the many up here, we can also destructure one. And what that allows us to do is link certain parts together. So check this out. We've got the fields and the references. And now we're saying that the tweets.user ID up here, which by the way, we can get rid of this. We cannot enforce this in any way. So it doesn't really matter. Now we're saying in the tweets relations that this user underscore ID actually has a certain relation and that is going to be to the users dot ID. So now we are enforcing that these two these values right here are actually linked together and check out what that does for us. So instead of this whole thing and then having to write a sub query or a join, well, we don't need to do any of that. So check this out. We can say db dot query and this is going to be just like Prisma dot users or tweets, whichever you want. Let's go for the users and then dot. Well, as you know, with Prisma, we have find first and find many. Let's find the first user. And in these parentheses, we can now pass something which you're all familiar with, like extras, offset, order by, where, with, and we want with the tweet. So each user or the first user that we're fetching from the table, well, there is only one, but that's who we're fetching. We can just say with, and then no, not tweets directly, but we can pass an object and then we can see tweets and we can just say true. So now we're saying, find me the first user and also give me that guy's tweets or that girl's tweets, whoever, right? So we can see the type that's going to get returned is either a user with their ID and their tweets as an array or nothing. If we cannot find any user at all, we can, I made sure of that. Let's get rid of all the unused imports. So what's about to happen is we only have a form in this JSX component. And when I click the button, it's going to trigger the form, which is in turn going to trigger this action. Essentially, we're just fetching data from the database and logging it out. So let's pull up the console and see what happens. I'm going to click the button 
And as you can see, we get the correct data that we are expecting. We get a user with an ID of one, just an integer that automatically increments. This could be any string or UUID that you want with all that person's tweets, which in my case is just one in a beautiful API that is super similar to Prisma, which is faster, which is more efficient and super close to the underlying SQL dialect, which I really enjoy. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Again, you getting to stop using Prisma is not on my agenda. I just have a really good time using Drizzle and I think you might just too. If you're a brand new beginner, Drizzle probably doesn't make that much sense for you. It probably makes more sense learning Prisma and learning all the web development basics before worrying too much about any database dialect like Postgres or SQL. With that said, I really enjoy my time using Drizzle and I think you might just too. Thanks very much for watching the video. Consider liking it if you liked the video and it helped you. And then I'm gonna see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.